you're being watched. Someone is watching you. Often in the middle of the night. Well, at least you hope so. That's the whole point of YouTube, right? But who the hell are they? Who is your audience? What are they doing out there watching you? Why are they watching you? If you're making videos and putting them up on YouTube, then you want to be watched. Viewers and subscribers is kind of the whole point, but who are these people watching us? YouTube is so big that it's really hard to know who your viewers are. Yes, you get some comments and some feedback, but those are usually the minority. 10% of viewers or less actually comment and they will either love you or they will hate you. And the majority of your viewers just sit there in silence. If we're making videos for that silent majority, how do we know what they want? So let's explore your audience. They are the reason you're here. And if you stick around to the end and you just want to make as much money as possible, then I'll reveal the most profitable audience to target on YouTube. Should we dive in? The popular wisdom is that you should aim to make videos for a single person. Come up with an avatar, your ideal viewer, and target them. And this sounds to me like sensible advice. So what I mean by this is coming up with a description of a specific person, well, you know, a fake person really, who fits into your target audience. This helps you take the generalization out of your content and your strategy and adds a lot more specificity to who you are actually making videos for. It also allows you to make videos on a few broader topic areas. No one is so focused on only one thing that that's all they're interested in. You see, the problem with niching down is that you might feel restricted in the type of content you feel able to make. That can really limit your creativity, but also your enjoyment. You, know, you can end up feeling trapped, forced into creating a similar type and topic of video again and again and again. And in all likelihood, you'll end up getting bored and give up before you really get anywhere. By creating your avatar, you are pulling together different character traits from this person, and it should make you feel able to talk to them about a whole range of subjects that they're interested in. Another piece of advice is try talking to your younger self and act as a guide to them. Tell them what you would have wanted to know back then. So think back 10 years ago, for example, what were you really struggling with and what would you have really appreciated if someone were to help you get over those struggles? So look, for me, my avatar is therefore probably a 30 to 50 year old male, married with a young family, works hard in their chosen career, can be a perfectionist, has hobbies that include sports, playing, watching, maybe even coaching, loves music, listens to it a lot, goes to the odd concert when they can, maybe even wants to make music themselves. Uh, they probably have some money to spend on hobbies and holidays, etc. And they're starting to think a bit more seriously about the future in investing and maybe even planning for retirement. Um, they are interested in self-improvement. They read books about business, productivity, finance, and they want to get better at their sporting hobbies. They want to get maybe fitter, in better shape. They uh, they love to learn. They love learning new skills, whether for their career or for the you know outside work as a way of keeping moving and progressing through life. They have the constant challenge though of a lack of time. At work, they are interested in getting the most out of their team, improving the team cohesion, improving performance. You know, they're interested in goal setting and achieving whatever that may mean for them. They also want to spend time with their family and they think about work and its purpose in their life. Okay, I think that's enough. I got a bit carried away with that, but you know, that's kind of, not all of that is the younger me, but there are elements of me when I was in my 30s there. There were elements of people I knew in my 30s. Look, that was an interesting exercise. And I think you can even go as far, and some people say you can name your personal avatar, you know? So I think I'll call mine Ben. So the point of that now is that I can speak to Ben and I can understand some of the things Ben is thinking about and feeling. What might his hobbies be and what might he be struggling with? You know, it can help me to tap into Ben's emotional side. Yes, he may be a 40 year old dude, but he's in touch with his feelings. Helps give a channel direction. There may be a 25 year old woman out there who loves guitar battles and will love the content that I've already made on the Eventide H90, which you can find here. There also may be a 50 year old man who really wants to retire early like I've managed to and wants some insights into how he may be able to do that as well. You are both most welcome here. Another really interesting aspect to all this 
do you even want a big audience? Now, I know that sounds stupid. Surely the whole point of all this is to grow a, a massive channel and sit back and watch the dollars roll in. Well, yes and no. The point, I think, is to grow an audience who really likes what you do and really wants to consume your content. If you do that and build a loyal following, then I don't think you need a huge audience. You are providing value to a smaller group of loyal fans and they're likely to be interested in other things that you provide them with value. So alongside the, you know, the ad revenue from YouTube, the business focused channels are also providing online courses, you know, one to one consulting sessions. And some are even some are even going old school and writing real life books. Ali Abdal, a productivity YouTuber with millions of subs, he's now releasing a book. Andrew Huang, a musician that I follow with, again, millions of subs, is also releasing a book on creativity. They can only do that because of the audience they have built and the value that they've provided over the long term. You still need to build an audience first. I get that. So we have a target audience in mind. And now with my business savvy hat on, what kind of content should we look to serve up to that audience of one? Ben, in this case. Well, if all we wanted to do was to try and maximize our income, then it would make sense to start a channel in one of the most profitable niches on YouTube. I said in my last video that I would reveal these, and here they are. These are inevitably broad buckets, and there are many niches within these categories. But if you want the big bucks, then you should target one of these. So this is in no particular order, but the first category is entrepreneurship. Okay, I had to start with that one, didn't I? Entrepreneur. Entrepreneurship. So one of the best niche markets is anything that teaches people how to make money online. Niches in digital marketing, e-commerce, or setting up your own business are all very lucrative to get into on YouTube. The second big category is finance and investing. The reason is that companies will spend a lot to show ads to your audience in this sector. The RPM is really high. Now, RPM is the amount of money YouTube will pay you per 1,000 views. The average RPM in 2023 is around $2, so anything more than that, and you're doing pretty well. If you create videos on personal finance, your ad revenue will be higher than the average channel because advertisers really want to target your audience and will pay for that privilege. The third niche, anything to do with cars. So according to uh, popular YouTuber Roberto Blake, the car niche is a profitable niche for YouTube. He mentioned in one of his videos that some car related channels make anything between $15 and $35 of RPM. Now, the reason for the range and the trouble for finding out RPM on frankly any niche or any category is that YouTube doesn't publish it. You have to do some digging and some research to find bits of evidence to help you. And that's what I've done to create this list. It might not be 100% correct and other people will have a different list, but it's a good place to start. The fourth category is tech. So the tech industry is a huge industry. Now the average RPM is actually quite low at around $2.39 per 1000 views. However, some tech channels in sort of more niche categories like photography can get a bit higher up to sort of seven or even $8 of RPM. So it's a combination of the fact that the market is huge, but the RPM is low. You can get a huge amount of uh, viewers, huge amount of watch hours, but the industry will pay you slightly less for those views. Five is mobile gaming. Something that I know almost nothing about. So this gets a really high RPM, even when some of the games are free. And that's because a lot of the mobile games have in-app purchases and can get a lot of new paid users by advertising on YouTube. Category six is tutorials. Now, this is a category that I like watching and I like making. I have already made some tutorial videos on my channel on music production gear and feel free to have a look at them. Um, now, obviously, this niche is extremely broad. You could create tutorials on pretty much anything from web development to spreadsheets to music production gear, as I have said I do. Now, there's also a lot of software you could teach in this niche that many people find difficult to use. So if you're particularly savvy with Photoshop or Excel or Final Cut Pro, this would be a great niche to go with. The final of my seven categories is outdoors and I've called it adventure. 
Um, has a lot of potential, this niche. Uh, can also fall under sort of travel, adventure, hiking, camping, anything like that. The RPM in these niches can really vary wildly. There's also, but there's so much potential for reviewing products and making money with affiliate marketing. Uh, and that's it, they are my seven biggest RPM categories that I have found uh, on YouTube. Please feel free to add some comments below if you disagree or if you found some other niche areas which have particularly high RPMs. Um, as I said, anything above the average of two is doing pretty well. Um, if you're up into the sort of 10, 15, 20 dollars, then you're likely to be in the categories here on entrepreneurship and finance. But these are the seven biggest categories I found on YouTube. So we have some ideas now about our niche and our target audience. Now the next step is to try and come up with some video ideas for that audience content that they really, really want to watch. What does Ben want to watch? What does your avatar want to watch from you? That's the next step, idea generation. How to do it, how not to do it, and how to avoid writer's block or video maker's block. Anyway, if, if you want to follow my journey, then please subscribe and very much thanks for watching. That's it for this week. I will see you next time.